Technology is ever advancing, and with the current trend in artificial intelligence, it could be a matter of time until even cricket coaches like us are replaced. In this video, we asked ChatGPT a few questions to see hypothetically how well this AI could teach you. The first question that we asked our AI companion was how to play a cover drive. And that's what it came up with. A cover drive is a classic cricket shot played on the front foot with the aim of hitting the ball straight and past the field of station in the covers. Here are the steps to play a cover drive. Number one, take your stance. Position yourself with your feet shoulder width apart and your weight evenly distributed. Make sure your head is still and your eyes are level. Number two, watch the ball. As the bowler runs in to deliver the ball, keep your eyes fixed on the ball, focusing on its line and length. Number three, move your front foot. As the ball approaches, take a step forward with your front foot and move your weight onto your front foot. Number four, extend your arms. As the ball reaches you, extend your arms fully and meet the ball with the middle of the bat. Number five, rotate your hips. Rotate your hips and shoulders to generate power and follow through with your bat. Number six, aim for the gap. When playing a cover drive, aim to hit the ball through the gap between the fielders in the covers. Remember to keep your head still, your eyes level, and your weight forward when playing the cover drive. With practice, you can master this classic shot and add it to your arsenal of batting skills. Knowing what the AI wants from us, let's go through the technique step by step and see how well it works out. Okay, cover drive. Take your stance. Position yourself with your feet shoulder width apart. Okay. Think and your weight much. and your weight evenly distributed. So 50-50. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Make sure your head is still and your eyes are level. Okay, perfect. Okay. Pretty standard explanation. Though I think the way cricket's going now, we're probably looking at probably more of a 60-40 split with the weight. Yeah, I would say also maybe some and players like slightly comfort. slightly broader stances. Just helps. Slightly with narrower, movement. just as long as it's close to shoulder width, happy yeah. with that. So 60-40. Okay, That's number our first change. Number two. Watch the ball. Okay. As the ball runs in to deliver the ball, keep your eyes fixed on the ball, focusing on, on its line and length. Yeah. Pretty self-explanatory, I yeah, think. Watching the ball all the way till contact is one of the most important things about batting. Okay, number three, move your front foot. As the ball approaches, take a step forward with your front foot and move your weight onto the front foot. Okay, so the big thing me and you both, well, that dislike about this immediately is the fact that it's the foot then the head. Yeah. So there's, it's not joint. There's a the disconnect between the two movements. And the head's always trying to play catch up then. Yeah, so what we would probably recommend is rather push with your head and your foot will follow. It's just a natural progression of what the human body wants to do to prevent yeah. you from falling over. Because if your head goes, your body's not going to let you fall on your face. So yes. the foot will go. 100%. Okay, number four. Extend your arms as the ball reaches you. Okay. Sorry, some wind, wind challenges. Extend your arms fully and meet the ball with the middle of the bat. Does it mean extend your arms fully like on contact, like straight arms? It doesn't explain. So basically what you want to do from our point of view is keep your figure nine shape yep. to contact and then extend your arms through. It doesn't also explain where the contact point is here, but I'll add that in with the next, with next, the next point. point. Happy. Okay, so point number five is rotate your hips. Rotate your hips and shoulders to generate power and follow through with your bat. Okay, so I think the, the massive thing here is not telling us how we're rotating our, rotating our hips and shoulders. So ideally with our straight bat shots, we want to almost have the bottom, well, the top shoulder dip and then the bottom shoulder rotate underneath it through the shot. So it's rotating on a vertical it. axis, not on a horizontal axis. Exactly. Same thing for the hips. So it's there instead of there. And then I said about the contact point now to the middle of the bat. Yeah. Because of the, sh hmm, you're growing up. <laughs> because of the shoulder dip here, your head's going to be over your front foot with everything we've done before. So contact will be underneath your eyes. Or and as then, close to it as possible at least. Exactly, and then the extension through with that will really help with the power and the follow through that they mentioned here. Okay. And then number six. Hit the gap. Aim for the gap. <laughs> okay, a uh, little tip we'd like to add here, specifically when it comes to aiming for the gap. When you are standing in your stance getting ready to receive a ball from a bowler, look at set targets on the boundary rope and not the players itself. So just look at a set target in the gap. This will help you hit those gaps more regularly because you're, if you're looking at the fielders, your brain will tend to find the fielders. 100%. So overall, I don't think that AI did too bad of a job here. B, what would you give it out of 10? I don't know. So my, my thing is it's doing a lot of what a lot of coaches do. 
is where they're expecting the player to just know certain things about yeah. it by leaving out some of that information where you always have to assume that the player doesn't know everything. I'd say for that one, maybe a six, six and a half, if okay. I'm highballing it out of 10. No, honestly, six and a half is not bad. It's just better than it, I it lacks a lot of information to make it as understandable and digestible as possible. It, and it, with more information, you leave less room for error. And I think that's what we want as a coach. Yeah. The sponsor of today's video is us and our new training programs. We have put together a strike rotation program and a power hitting program. The links will be in the description below and as a pinned comment. Check them out there. The second question we asked, we decided to delve into some bowling questions. So we asked it, how do I brace my front leg when bowling in cricket? Bracing your front leg when bowling in cricket is important to maintain balance and generate power in your delivery. Here are some tips to follow. Number one, start with your front foot pointing towards the basin and your back foot perpendicular to the crease. Number two, as you begin your run-up, take a few quick steps and then lengthen your stride, making sure your front foot lands just in front of the bowling crease. Number three, as you land, make sure your front leg is straight and braced with your knee locked in place. This will help you transfer your weight onto your front foot and generate power in your delivery. Number four, your back foot should land parallel to the crease with your heel just touching the ground. This will help you maintain balance and control as you deliver the ball. As you release the ball, follow through with your bowling arm and pivot on your front foot, allowing your back foot to follow through and complete the delivery. Remember to practice regularly and focus on your technique to improve your bowling skills. A coach or experienced player can provide valuable feedback to help you refine your technique and develop your own unique style. For the second section, we're gonna do a bowling question that Byron has read through on video. So we're gonna do a live demonstration and see how well the AI explained it. I'm very excited for this as I have read it already. So let's get going. How do I brace my front leg when bowling in cricket? So it basically says bracing your front leg when bowling in cricket is important to maintain balance and generate power in your delivery. Here are some steps to follow. I fully agree. Fair. Number one, I'm going to assume seeing as I have read through this already that you need to go back a bit because okay. it's going to be run up. Start with your front foot pointing towards the batter. That's one. Got it. Done. Check and your mark. back foot perpendicular to the crease. Check mark. Okay. Not much you can say about this. It's literally telling us how to start a run up. I'd assume. Okay. Does it say anything about the run up? Number two. As you begin your run up, could you believe? <laughs> Take a few quick steps and then lengthen your stride. Obviously, we're not going to show that. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, it's just about finding your rhythm all the way up until your delivery it's point. General your running stride. Yep. As, as you get a rhythm, your stride lengthens. Make sure your front foot lands just in front of the bowling crease. Oh, so it doesn't tell anything about the run up itself, just short strides into longer strides. 100%. And okay. happy? Front foot lands just in front of the bowling crease. So it's a bit vague, probably a no -ball. Anything about the back foot? No, not yet. That's later on. All right. So it says front foot landing in front of the bowling crease. Which is vague because we don't know if it's this in front or that in front. Which could mean either no ball or wasted space. 100%. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, not really much. If you want to speak about run up, what we would add there is obviously with this, making sure your run up's in a straight line and making sure that you lean a little bit forward in the run up. Making sure it's rhythmical, not too fast, because as soon as you go too fast, you're carrying too much momentum into your delivery stride and you can't get over your front leg. 100%. But I thought you were all spin, right? I do with a run-up. <laughs> Number three. Continue. Go fetch your ball. This better stay in the video. <laughs> as you land, make sure your front leg is straight and braced with your knee locked in place. What? So as we land, we're asking them to teach us how to brace our front leg. They say, as you land, you'll make sure your leg is braced. Do it. Sure. Okay. This will help you transfer your weight onto your front foot and generate power in your delivery. Success, we're done. No, we're done. Obviously, that's all it takes. Okay, we will go in a bit more depth at the end of this because I just want to get through the rest of them. Yeah. Before we explain there. Number four, your back foot should land parallel to the crease. So now we've landed with our front foot and now we're going back to our back foot landing. Don't so know. the issue with landing parallel with the back crease is it only, it takes two things into consideration. Either you've got a closed off action or side on action as a seam bowler, or you probably a spinner. Which is still side on action. Yeah. So it's only taking side on action. Only side on action. So no 45 actions or open actions allowed if you want to brace your okay. front leg. No, but get back there. There's sure. more. With your yield just touching the ground. Yep, there we go. <laughs> this will help you maintain balance and control as you deliver the ball. I mean, okay, sure. Cool. Not that there's a little bit of a drag on your ball, but cool. Number five, as you release the ball, 
follow through with your bowling arm. Yeah, follow yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And pivot on your front foot. So it only takes spin into consideration. Allow your back foot to follow through and complete the delivery. Okay, so Remember obviously- to practice regularly and focus on your technique to improve your bowling skills. So obviously with this one, there are massive crevices or- Gaps in knowledge. Gaps in knowledge. Okay, so we've already spoken about the run up. Yeah. But what we are gonna do now is we're gonna speak about what happens in the crease. Your back foot is gonna land according to what your action is. Yes. So side on. Okay, so side on. 45. 45. Or front on. Or front on. And then the top half of the body would have to stick with that. Align but as a with that. coach, you need to know because you don't have a mixed action and break your back. Yes. Next up, you want a nice high knee in your action. So front knee, high front knee. And this is going to allow us to snap down, yep. which is going to assist with the brace. So and as that leg comes down, it's a firm snap. And then a little cheat code, try and pull your front toes through your front heel. Because that's going to help generate your body over your front foot like Zena mentioned earlier with yep. leaning forward in the run-up, make sure your chest is over your front foot at the point of delivery, because then everything's over it and it's going to be that much harder to not have a braced leg. Because yeah. all that momentum is going to be driving through the crease and the band won't allow it, because then your weight is dropping. Okay, now the main thing that it completely left out was the work that your front arm needs to do. Ideally, you might want the front arm to go up and forwards, get you now nice and high in your action. And then as and a then from there in tight hard into the body this helps you generate momentum over that front leg that's as a seamer and then if you're as a spinner the front arm can just go straight and through in that and line through. yeah to help you spend a bit more time on the front leg to assist with getting the revs on the wall after everything we've just discussed and had to add to this program let's hear Barnes' final thoughts and his score out of 10. it's gonna sound a bit harsh <laughs> i mean it didn't really teach us anything zero, it, it's step th <laughs> zero out of zero 10. maybe a half because it did speak about run up but it didn't say the necessary parts of the run-up. And all it said was... That's why it gets a half. <laughs> to and learn how to brace your front leg, you will land and brace your front leg. And it did tell you that a coach or experienced player can help provide valuable feedback to help you refine your technique and develop your only half out of 10. The third question we asked was, how do I hit the ball harder in cricket? Hitting the ball harder in cricket requires a combination of technique, timing and physical strength. Here are some tips to help you hit the ball harder. Number one. Use a good grip. A firm grip on the bat will help you generate more power when you hit the ball. Your top hand should be slightly above your bottom hand and your grip should be relaxed but firm. Number two, use your whole body. Power in cricket comes from your entire body, not just your arms. Make sure you use your legs, hips and core muscles to generate power when hitting the ball. Number three, time the ball well. Hitting the ball harder doesn't necessarily mean swinging harder. In fact, trying to hit the ball too hard can lead to mistiming and a weak shot. Focus on timing the ball well and hitting it in the middle of the bat. Number four, swing the bat with purpose. When you swing the bat, do so with purpose and intent. Keep your eye on the ball and swing through it, using your whole body to generate power. Number five, practice regularly. Consistent practice is key to developing your batting skills and increasing your power. Make sure you practice regularly, focusing on technique, timing and power. Number six, build strength. Strength training can help you build the physical strength needed to hit the ball harder. Focus on exercises that target your legs, hips, core and upper body, such as squats, lunges, deadlifts and push-ups. Remember, hitting the ball harder in cricket is not just about swinging harder. It's about using proper technique, timing and physical strength to generate power and hit the ball with purpose. With practice and training, you can develop your skills and become a powerful and effective batter. B, take us through it. Yeah, so that says you need a combination of technique, timing and physical strength. I you've, do agree with that. You've got two of them. Yeah, I know. I've got the technique and the physical strength. <laughs> you talk rubbish. <laughs> the, the timing the time is there. Strength, maybe not. Okay, so number one, same friend. It says use a good grip. Okay. A firm grip on the bat will help you generate more power when you hit the ball. Okay. Your top hand should be slightly, I've put it in inverted commas, yeah, above your bottom hand. Doesn't fully explain what it is. Um, could be golfer's grip, could be normal grip, doesn't explain. Okay. So what we'd say is either top index finger touching bottom pinky or a little bit of a gap between Ooh, yeah. any variation there, a little bit to, towards comfort. Yeah, Unless completely you towards comfort. Unless, yeah, well, you could do fuff. Yeah, but, but still, in general, for 99% of batters, you're going to be looking at a situation like this where there's maybe a little bit of play between the two hands so you can 
have that room for your bottom end to work. Exactly. And your grip should be relaxed, but firm. Okay. If, uh, me knowing cricket, I think that means the arms need to be nice and relaxed, and then the grip on the bat must be quite firm. So that I fully agree with, but if someone would be reading that as someone with not a lot of cricket background... It would be a little bit confusing. That would be confusing. Okay, and for us, it would be the top hand tight, bottom hand a bit looser yeah. from a control factor. Yeah. Okay, so number two, use your whole body. Power in cricket comes from your entire body, not just your arms. Make sure you, you use your legs, hips, and core muscles to generate power in hitting the ball. Um, hips again, it's basically like what happened with the cover drive. Okay. Um, I think, obviously, the hips do drive through the ball. They do drive, we need a as little well bit with of your a... shoulders. You do have a little bit more of a, a pop through the shot. I think the key point here is making sure it happens at the correct time. Yeah, so the shoulders and hips are linked yeah. in, in, that, so in that time. When it comes to power hitting, let's make sure that it happens on or just before contact? No. Through contact. Yeah, or on or through contact, not before contact. Yeah. Um, also, if we're looking at it, legs need to be nice and strong to provide you with a nice, strong, stable base and allow you to get to the ball. Hips and shoulders is going to help you generate your swing power. Core is where everything starts moving from, so that needs to be nice and strong as well. And then obviously the arms need to work through it. You have to have a little bit of power there. Can't wait for number six, friend. Number three, time the ball well. In the ball harder doesn't necessarily mean swinging harder. True. I tend to agree. Yeah, I in think fact, more, timing is definitely more important. In fact, trying to hit the ball too hard can lead to mistiming and a weak shot. Fully agree with that. Yeah. Focus on timing the ball well and hitting it in the middle of the bat. Yeah. Does not tell us how. That is very true. So, key principles of timing is watching the ball the whole way, contact points. They speak about watching it in the next one, but they don't speak about contact points. Okay. So, at least they do tell you to keep your arm on the ball. Okay, let's continue then. Okay, let's, let's, go with, let's just go to the next one. So, swing the bat with purpose. Yes. Agree. When you swing the bat, do so with purpose and intent. I love the word intent in cricket. So keep your half hearted shots always get you into trouble. 100%. Keep your eye on the ball and swing through it. Yep. I like the term through it. Using your whole body to generate power. I've just put a little word here. Extension. Okay. With Making sure arms. that we can extend through with our arms. But that will come after the contact, which will be... I would say specifically you want to go over the top, slightly in front of your eye line, just a little bit so you can get that elevation. Okay, but it is still nice and forward, generating yep. that power from your legs. Number five, practice regularly. Consistent practice is key to developing your batting skills and increasing your power. So focus on technique, timing, and power. Fully agree, the more you it's practice, the, the more natural it becomes. Is, yeah. Okay. Number six, friend, I'm so excited. Okay, so it says build strength. Strength training can help you build physical strength needed to hit the ball harder. So you need to focus on exercises that target your legs, hips, core, and upper body. Okay. Such as squats. Okay, I'll, do, I'll do a couple for you. Yes, look at this man. Working on the one thing we said he didn't have, physical strength. Shut up. Lunges. Good man, you have to do both legs. I have to, can't yeah. cut, it's leg day. Yeah, 100%. Deadlifts, you can just deadlift your bat. <laughs> deadlift my bat. I'll go full now, I'll dazzle. There we go. Okay. Always focusing on good form for all of these. And push-ups. Okay. Always make sure your form is good so you get the most out of the exercise and targets the correct body parts. Uh, at the end here it says, remember, hitting the ball harder in cricket is not just about swinging harder, it's about using proper technique, timing and physical strength to generate power and hit the ball with purpose. With, training, uh, with practice and training, you can develop your skills and become a more powerful and effective batsman. I just think the only thing they've really left out yeah, here, and I've say, written it down. There's one massive thing that they left out, and I think that's one of the most important things when it comes to hitting the ball nice and hard. Is hand speed. Hand speed, 100%. And uh, that also almost links into what golfers would use the, uh, the term tempo. Yes. So making sure that the fastest point of your swing is at your contact point. And um, making sure that the swing is nice and fluid. Yeah. It can't be stuttery because then you're wasting all that yeah. kinetic energy through the ball. The faster, simply the faster you can get your hands through the line of the ball and through the contact point, the further you're going to hit the ball. So taking all of this into consideration, B, I don't think this one was that bad as well. What would you give this one out of 10? Considering you gave the cover drive a six? Six, six and a half. Um, it's tough. It's really tough. Because I do think the cover drive covered the cover drive 
pretty well, but this is a bit more of a vague question. And I like the fact that they brought in the, the strength as well. Yeah. Not a lot of people focus on that when they think about power heating. So maybe a six as well. Yeah. Um, of course, hand speed I think is massive with this. Um, explaining where the contact point is, is massive for something like this. And then just the explanation of a grip left quite a lot open to interpretation as well. I agree. It also spoke about using your hips and shoulders through your the whole contact, body, but yes. we didn't know when that should be popping through, which could lead to massive issues in your power game. If a disconnect correctly. between the movements. Yeah. I, I agree. But I still think a six, um, if if a player that understood cricket got this, yeah, I don't think it's a problem. You can work with it. Yeah, if a player is new to the sport, I think they're going to really would struggle. Not it would not be sufficient. But this is a little bit, like you said, a bit but more advanced than the previous one. Your time is up, cricket coaches. The future is fully autonomous. That might be true, sir, but not today. After going through all of this today, we feel that our jobs are still safe. So what you want to do is thank all our members for making these videos possible. And if you want to check another button video, be somewhere over here.